Have you ever tried deep breathing, meditation, vagus nerve exercises, but you still feel like you're stuck, like your body just won't settle? That's because your neck could be the reason. Hi, I'm Dr. Ariane Mismer. I'm a functional medicine practitioner, doctor of physical therapy, registered dietitian, and owner of the Movement Paradigm Integrative Health Center. And today I want to show you how the tension in your neck can physically affect your airway, your vagus nerve, and your ability to regulate your nervous system. By the end of this video, you'll understand why so many calming strategies fail. And I'll walk you through a simple science-backed reset that can create immediate shift in your body. So your vagus nerve, cranial nerve 10, runs from your brain stem through your neck down to your chest and all the way to the abdomen. So in your neck, it travels within the carotid sheath right next to your SCM muscle, which we'll get into a, into a moment. This is the big ropey muscle on the side of your neck. When this area becomes tight, typically from forward head posture, from mouth breathing, from chronic stress, airway resistance, it can irritate or compress the vagus nerve and the surrounding fascial network. And because the vagus nerve plays a central role in turning on your parasympathetic nervous system, it's essentially 80% of that, your body's calming response. If it is stressed, so are you. So let's try something. We're going to do a quick little pre-test. So right now, I'd love for you to rate your current level of tension or stress from a 1 to 10. Notice your breath. Notice your neck, your jaw. Take a little quick assessment. So now pause, rate your tension. Where do you feel it in your body? All right. So now we'll go step by step for the reset. Number one is your SCM and neck fascial release. We're going to focus on cranial nerve 11, so your spinal accessory nerve, which is the motor input to the sternocleidomastoid muscle and the trapezius muscle. Cranial nerve 10, which is the vagus nerve that is going to be adjacent to the SCM and it's going to be influenced via these fascial relationships. So we're going to start by gently releasing the SCM. So the SCM is going to attach to the mastoid here and the sternum here. So you're going to turn your head, you're going to feel it pop out. That ropey muscle, that is your SCM, which is innervated by the spinal accessory nerve. So what we're going to do is just place a little pressure here, okay? And you're just going to gently rotate your head back and forth. Okay, so this also shares a fascial space with the vagus nerve. So when it is tight, it can interfere with vagus nerve signaling, and most often it is tight in many people. So you can start right in the center of the muscle, and then you can actually move more towards the tendons, which is going to be even more helpful. So you can come up towards the right behind the ear here, and you can start to gently release this way. So just rotating the head back and forth, so you're lengthening and shortening the muscle and then also even down towards the sternum here so you can kind of feel that okay you do want to make sure that you are doing this very gently so there should be no forceful pressure this is just essentially going to help soften the tone in the muscle decompress the area around the vagus nerve and then ultimately help to down regulate excessive sympathetic tone step two is going to be nasal breathing and soft palate activation so the first thing that we want to think of here is we're going to influence our trigeminal nerve so that's cranial nerve five uh, so that's our sensation of your face your nasal mucosa. We're also going to stimulate the glossopharyngeal nerve, which is going to be the soft palate sensation, and the vagus nerve, which is going to be the motor aspect to the soft palate and airway tone, and the hypoglossal nerve, which is going to influence tongue control. So now we're going to combine nasal breathing with soft palate activation. This is essentially going to engage the vagus, the glossopharyngeal, the hypoglossal nerves to improve airway tone. So I'm going to have you take three slow nasal breaths. So in through the nose, out through the nose. Just simply letting the air glide across the roof of the mouth, not down your throat. Now we're going to add in a gentle k, k, k sound, which is going to stimulate the soft palate, activating the cranial nerves and lifting the back of the tongue. So k, k, 
Nutka, you'll feel that soft palate rise. This is going to improve the oral airway control, balance pressure in your head and neck, and send afferent information or input to the brain to calm the nervous system down. Step three is going to be an auricular vagus nerve stimulation. So here we are primarily focusing on the auricular branch of the vagus nerve. So there's also a minor sensory overlap with the facial nerve and the glossopharyngeal nerve. So we're going to directly stimulate the vagus nerve through the ear, which has small branches called the auricular vagus nerves. So you're going to use your fingers and gently rub the tragus, that's that little flap in the front of your ear. So you can just really just gently kind of go up and down here. Actually feels very relaxing or right behind that area. So if you go right behind the tragus, there's you're going to move into the conca. So that's where you can also just do a very, very gentle massage here. So while you're doing this, so again, if you can kind of see up close, I'm just kind of right inside of the ear. So here's the tragus, that flap. You're going to come right behind it and just very gently <laughs> massaging this area. So while you're doing that, now you can add a gentle humming exhale. So you can think of So you might not be able to hear that with my microphone, but that is going to engage your vocal cords and increase the vagal tone via the vagus nerve. So we can repeat this a few times, letting the vibration really just settle into your chest. So it feels very soothing because again, we're stimulating the motor aspect of the vagus and we're also stimulating the um, the sensory aspect. So when you do this together, it's really pretty powerful. Okay, so now I'd love for you to pause, re-rate your tension level one to level 10. How does your breath feel? How does your neck feel? How does your mental clarity feel? And even if it went down just a little bit, that's a huge win. If you had no change, that's okay too. Every reset is for every person, but we're looking really more upstream and looking at how we can reprogram the cranial nerves and ultimately really influence the nervous system, especially if you're feeling like everything you try just doesn't seem to be super effective for you. So ultimately, these gentle inputs can help reset the vagus nerve by freeing some of the mechanical restrictions, activating key cranial nerves and improving the airway tone. Make sure you check out all of my other videos on vagus nerve exercises as well as airway and breathing so that you can really begin to understand the depth and breadth of this. But hopefully this was helpful for you today. If it was, make sure you give it a like, give it a share, subscribe to our YouTube channel for more tips like this on whole body wellness through integrative and root cause medicine. If you've been stuck in this stress cycle and traditional breath work or mindfulness has not worked, please don't skip the neck, the airway and the cranial nerve connection. This is where neuroanatomy meets somatic science, and it's often the missing piece. Thank you as always. I appreciate you, and I'll see you next time.